Number 10 Kelly's Heroes During World War II, German Colonel Dankopf is captured by the Americans, but before he can be interrogated, an artillery barrage hits the camp. However, Lieutenant Kelly manages to reach the colonel, get him drunk, and learn that he is on a secret mission to ship $16 million of gold to a base in France. Kelly is determined to get the gold and plans for himself and a few of his fellow soldiers to slip into enemy territory and steal the bullion. Number 9 Where Eagles Dare During World War II, a British aircraft is shot down and crashes in Nazi-held territory. The Germans capture the only survivor, American Brigadier General George Carnaby, and take him to the nearest S headquarters. Unknown to the Germans, the general has full knowledge of the D-Day operation. The British decide that the general must not be allowed to divulge any details of the Normandy landing at all costs, and order Major Jonathan Smith to lead a crack commando team to rescue him. Amongst the team is an American ranger, Lieutenant Morris Schaefer, who is puzzled by his inclusion in an all-British operation. When one of the team dies after the parachute drop, Schaefer suspects that Smith's mission has a much more secret objective. Number 8 Dirty Harry In 1971, San Francisco faces the terror of a maniac known as the Scorpio Killer, who snipes at innocent victims and demands ransom through notes left at the scene of the crime. Inspector Dirty Harry Callahan is assigned to the case along with his newest partner, Inspector Chico Gonzalez, to track down Scorpio and stop him. Using humiliation and cat and mouse type of games against Callahan, Scorpio is put to the test with the cop with the dirty attitude. Number 7 The Outlaw Josie Wales Josie Wales makes his way west after the Civil War, determined to live a useful and helpful life. He joins up with a group of settlers who need the protection that a man as tough and experienced as he is can provide. Unfortunately, the past has a way of catching up with you and Josie is a wanted man. Number 6, A Fistful of Dollars. Drifter gunman Joe arrives in the Mexican village of San Miguel at the border of the United States of America and befriends the owner of the local bar, Silvanito. Joe discovers that the town is dominated by two gangster lords, John Baxter and the cruel Ram and Rojo. When Joe kills four men of Baxter's gang, he is hired by Ram N's brother Esteban Rojo to join their gang. However, Joe decides to work for both sides, playing one side against the other. Number 5 Grand Torino Walt Kowalski is a widower who holds onto his prejudices despite the changes in his Michigan neighborhood and the world around him. Kowalski is a grumpy, tough-minded, unhappy old man who can't get along with either his kids or his neighbors. He is a Korean War veteran whose prized possession is a 1972 Grand Torino, he keeps in mint condition. When his neighbor Thou Lore, young Mong teenager, under pressure from his gang member cousin, tries to steal his Grand Torino, Kowalski sets out to reform the youth. Drawn against his will into the life of Thou's family, Kowalski is soon taking steps to protect them from the gangs that infest their neighborhood. Number 4 Million Dollar, Baby. Wanting to learn from the best, aspiring boxer Maggie Fitzgerald wants Frankie Dunn to train her. At the outset, he flatly refuses, saying he has no interest in training a girl. Frankie leads a lonely existence, alienated from his only daughter and having few friends. Maggie's rough around the edges, but shows a lot of grit in the ring, and he eventually relents. Maggie not only proves to be the boxer he always dreamed of having under his wing, but a friend who fills the great void he's had in his life. Maggie's career skyrockets, but an accident in the ring leads her to ask Frankie for one last favor. Number 3 Unforgiven After escaping death by the skin of her teeth, the horribly disfigured prostitute, Delilah Fitzgerald, and her appalled and equally furious co-workers summon up the courage to seek retribution in 1880s Wyoming's dangerous town of Big Whiskey. With a hefty bounty on the perpetrator's heads, triggered by the tough sheriff, Little Bill, Daggett's insufficient sense of justice, the infamous former outlaw and now destitute Kansas hog farmer, William Money, embarks on a murderous last mission to find the men. Behind the hideous crime, along with his old partner in crime, Ned Logan, and the brash but inexperienced young gunman, the Schofield Kid, Money enters a perilous world he has renounced many years ago, knowing that he walks right into a deadly trap. 
however, he still needs to find a way to raise his motherless children. Now, blood demands blood. Who is the hero? And who is the villain? Number 2. For a few dollars more. Drifting from town to town, the poncho-clad man with no name and the lightning-fast right hand rides into the town of El Paso in search of maniacal escaped convict El Indio. It's been 18 short months since the deadly confrontation in Per Un Pugno di Dolari, and this time, the solitary stranger, now a professional bounty hunter, must go against his beliefs and do the unthinkable, join forces with hawk-eyed marksman Colonel Douglas Mortimer to collect the hefty reward. Now, as El Indio and his cutthroats have already set their sights on robbing the crammed with cash bank of El Paso, the stage is set for a bloody showdown at high noon, against the backdrop of silent double crosses and fragile allegiances. But is it worth dicking with death for a few dollars more? Number one, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Blondie, the good, is a professional gunslinger who is out trying to earn a few dollars. Angel Eyes, the bad, is a hitman who always commits to a task and sees it through as long as he's paid to do so. And Tuco, the ugly, is a wanted outlaw trying to take care of his own hide. Tuco and Blondie share a partnership, making money off of Tuco's bounty, but when Blondie unties the partnership, Tuco tries to hunt down Blondie. When Blondie and Tuco come across a horse carriage loaded with dead bodies, they soon learn from the only survivor, Bill Carson, that he and a few other men have buried a stash of gold in a cemetery, unfortunately. Carson dies and Tuco only finds out the name of the cemetery, while Blondie finds out the name on the grave. Now, the two must keep each other alive in order to find the gold. Angel Eyes discovers that Tuco and Blondie met with Carson and knows they know where the gold is. Now, he needs them to lead him to it. Now the good, the bad, and the ugly must all battle it out to get their hands on $200,000 worth of gold. We appreciate your support and the time you took to watch our video. We hope you enjoyed the content and look forward to bringing you more in the future. Thanks again for your support.